Hey everyone, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I worked on this week. Thank you so much for those of you that hung out with me on the live stream and a huge thank you for everyone that watched the replay. During this past live stream, we worked on this exploding square, square and a square and a square, and we just had fun working with my batiks and creating this layout. Thank you guys so much for helping me just spend a little time with each other, chat a little bit, and get a little bit going on this project. Now, I was going to turn this into a wall hanging, but since it's about 18 and a quarter inches right now, not very well pressed, not quilted or anything like that, I'm going to turn this into an 18 inch pillow or pillow cover. And it's essentially about the same thing. You can either hang it up as a mini quilt or put it on a pillow. I think that's a really useful thing. The pillow covers will be nice and flat. You can just stack them up in a closet or in uh, one of those plastic containers, a large Ziploc type baggie. They do have those storage bags. Like I know the Dollar Tree has those vacuum bags and they are, they actually work really well. Sorry, I'm trying to slow my voice down and I seem to have gotten into a race mode and each video I seem to talk a little bit faster and faster and faster and I have no need to rush. So I'm gonna calm down and relax. Chat about our favorite things, fabrics and sewing fabrics and fabric scraps. But by turning this into a pillow top, if someone would like to purchase it from the Etsy shop and hang it on their wall, I'm going to do the version where you put the binding around it. So it's going to look just like a wall hanging or you can put it on your pillow. As I mentioned, I love the idea of being able to hang it on the wall today and maybe in a few months, I want to take it out of my sewing room and put it on a pillow in the living room. Very, very versatile that way. I still want to sit down and play with it. I have a couple of ideas that might change the inconsistencies I had where I had a couple. If you hung out with me in the live stream, you may have noticed that I was having a little issue with getting like my squares to be the same size. I have it cut in just slightly here. I mean, I am over exaggerating, but I can see when I line this up that this block goes in about an eighth of an inch. So I wanted to see if I could make some o or use some oversized squares and then trim them to size like I do with most things and that tends to solve my wonky issue. This isn't unusual for me. I have the same problem when I do have square triangles. If I pay attention and I'm really watching what I'm doing, then things tend to work out okay. If I'm hanging out with a bunch of you guys in a live stream and chit-chatting away, or I'm not paying attention, then things get a little wonky. So I wanna try that out. We talked about taking this and making a standalone tutorial so that those of you who want to make this, but you don't wanna sit through a live stream and fast forward, fast forward, rewind, fast forward. We'll put this as a standalone tutorial I've been thinking about changing up a few things. It's not really gonna affect you guys. I, I want to take some of the live streams that are actually tutorials and turn them into a smaller tutorial and start adjusting things. Take some things that I did in the past, bring them back, take some things I'm doing now and change them or cut them out. You guys will see it. It's nothing overly exciting. There's just gonna be a couple little tweaks coming to the channel. And that's just what you do in life in general. You change things as you go. At least in my life, I'm always tweaking things just a little bit to get that to work better for me, more comfortably, and to maybe save some steps. But that's that. Get it all pressed really nice, and I'm going to quilt it. And I don't know, I haven't decided. I keep thinking about it. I was actually working through it while I was sleeping. I don't wanna say I was dreaming about it. I think my brain was just engaged and I wasn't sleeping very well. So it was trying to figure things out. And in my sleep state, I did the matchstick quilting just straight up and down, which is really unusual for me because I prefer it on the diagonal. So we'll see, you'll see what it looks like when I finish it. This week, my patrons and I worked on this nautical mug rug. It's a little bit bigger than a mug rug, in my opinion. 
It measures about 9 by 11, and then that's fine. You can have it as a mug rug. Mug rugs, of course, can be any size, but I look at this more as a little mini quilt to hang up in the studio, or maybe you have a beach house or something like that. So for this mug rug, we played with a couple different techniques. We worked on our applique and stitching it down. We talked about layering appliques to get a certain look and to make sure colors don't shadow through or anything like that so my white on my lighthouse is nice and bright white and you don't see any of the clouds popping through i love the striped binding that i used on it that's a fun fabric that just came into the studio recently and then i had some of this left over if you've been here for a while you might remember seeing this fabric before i made a cell phone holder out of it I thought with the blue and the white, it worked really well with the seaside theme. I am almost out of my cloud fabric. I think when I finally make it up to the Hobby Lobby, I need to make a list. I'm gonna put a list in my phone of different things I wanna look for. I wanna look for background fabrics and things like the sky and the clouds or maybe some movement for water, the like, there's fabrics that are nature inspired. So there's a whole bunch of rocks or you might see a bunch of seashells. Then there's the ones that look like wood or fences and stuff. I'd like to get a small supply of it. I don't need yards of it. I'm thinking somewhere along the line of maybe just even a quarter yard would be fine. I know Joann's lets you cut whatever you want. I haven't been to Hobby Lobby and bought fabric. I would imagine there they also allow you to cut the certain amount you want. Because I know that I can go to Joann's and say, can I have three inches of this? And it would be no problem. Can I have seven and a half inches? And they just cut you whatever you want. I always err on the side of wider. If I wanted a bunch of charm squares, instead of ordering five inches, I would always order something like six inches, add an inch or so on it, because Joanne's fabric isn't straight and they don't cut straight. So you always wanna buffer it up a little bit. But this one is going into the shop. Along with all the zipper pouches that I made this week, I have finished these up and I've taken photos of them. I need to edit them to get them into the shop. So as always, if you see something you'd like, just go ahead and send me a message. Give me a screenshot or if it's really easy to say something like the rainbow puppy paws coin pouch or something like that so that I know which one you're talking about then I can get that into the shop right away. But I need to edit all the photos first. That's what I'm getting at. Today is Monday morning when I'm recording this. My daughter and I are going to go out. She needs some work shoes, so I'm gonna go hang out with her for a while, come home, edit this video, and if there's enough time to get everything edited and in the shop. But I have some sewing thread on a black background, pull sides. It was hard to come up with a zipper for this, but I saw that there was a lot of the greens. So I went with a dark green zipper and all of these have a, a little, I shouldn't say all of them, but this one has a light gray with a little print on it on the inside for the lining. These all have cotton batting in it. I was trying to be economical and use the batting that I have left over my scraps and everything. I have a small amount of fusible fleece left and I thought, well, let me save that for the cell phone cozies that I wanna work on next. So I went and used the batting, but the problem with that is it's not a problem, but for me, I need to quilt them. So I had to add quilting lines to all of these just to keep everything held together and looking nice. And if I were to use fusible fleece, I wouldn't have to quilt them, especially with the small pouches like this. But it's fine because I like the softness and I like the batting, but when you're making you know, 14 of them or something, you kind of get tired of quilting them after a bit. So this one's got white crackle fabric on the inside, so nice rainbow paws, a little yellow zipper. Both of those are more of a coin size. Then I had this puppy fabric, the puppy paws, so I put a diagonal stripe of that fabric in there. And because it doesn't have that much yellow in it, this one feels, because it has a lot of the yellow section right there, that it feels a lot different than this one does, especially when you put black on the outside. Putting the black paw prints on it, it really brightens this up. So this has the paw prints are seen paw prints anyways they pretty much have about a heart shape to it so then there's some interspersed hearts 
white on white lining. So I was just trying to experiment to see if I liked it with a wide strip or if a narrower strip. Did I like the look? Was it something that made the boring zipper pouch, which I don't want to say they're boring, but you know, it's just a one fabric that it adds a little bit of a pop of something to it. I did the same thing with the aliens, but I used a little bit narrower to see which one I preferred. And I think it all depends on the fabric you have. So I have the nice bright green aliens. I have this bright green fabric with stars on it. So I went ahead and put it on both sides and I do like that. And this is a good size zipper pouch. And I used green on the inside with a nice neon green highlighter green zipper. I thought that was fun. I didn't think I was ever going to use that zipper. It was from a multi-pack that I purchased from Zip It. So that was nice to be able to use that. It was nice to be able to use these two colors. Some colors with zippers, it's a little bit harder to match a fabric to them. Purple fabric, purple zipper, green fabric, green zipper, but the neon colors and the little bit darker colors can be hard to find a good match. So I went ahead and I used the narrow orange on this fox pouch. This fox is actually a flannel. You can see that there. But I thought, why can't you have a flannel zipper pouch? It's a zipper pouch. There's no rules on that, right? This has orange on the inside. It's the same orange that I have there, I believe. The orange quilting lines to keep everyone together. I was very busy with zipper pouches. I've been working on these on and off for about a week and a half, two weeks. So I love this bright colored yarn skeins here and the balls of yarn. So I went with a nice pink zipper to pull in because it had a lot of the pinks that were popping on that. And then it had this yarn fabric on the inside. YKK zippers, because in my opinion, for the zippers that I've come across, they are my favorite. They have the smoothest zip. So there's some more yarn balls. And these almost look like puppy prints right there, little paw prints. And then this fabric. The yellow seemed a little bit much to put on the outside of a zipper pouch, so I tucked it in on the inside. These are great. You have yarn, so if you knit or crochet, or if you weave with the yarn and stuff like that, or if you just like the colors, the fabric and all, but you can put your crochet hooks, double pointed needles. You can keep this as like a little notions pouch, put your scissors, your stitch markers and all of that inside. I love this fabric. This is such a pretty fabric. I know I'm not really a flower fabric person, but every now and then a certain flower fabric will come across my path and I just really like it. I like this color green and I like the pinks against it, the big bold flowers. Here's another fun flower one. It's nice and bright. This is actually, sometimes if I sneak it in, you can get a uh, actual idea of what the color's like. This is, a more of a brighter yellow versus the darkest. When I'm looking through my phone, it's like the green and the yellow kind of all blend together. So this has the checkered or the gingham background for the yellow, and then it has the green print of butterflies and flowers. I like these flowers. You can make these and put like rickrack on them. And then you can have your, your little bits coming out here and there's little circles so you can applique them. Or if you want, you can go ahead and use like French knots or buttons or something like that. So that's the way of taking a fabric like this and turning it into an art project and have your baseline so you don't have to think about anything. And then you can just come through with either some free motion quilting and draw with your thread. So you do some thread painting. Or you can come in with your embroidery floss and do a little work, add the little stamen things here and add some French knots. Again, do the rick rack, or you can add just some fabric on there. So you can get a look of the art quilt with having the baseline there and you don't have to worry about, can I draw something? How creative am I? Someone's already done the work for you. 
So I took the thread and I put it in a larger pouch. And this is one of the ones that I started with. And I like, okay, I'll put crosshatch quilting on it. And it didn't take me very long to realize that that was way too much time and work to go into a pouch like this. Now I don't mind spending all of the time quilting on my big tote bags and stuff because when you're putting something in the shop, if you guys ever want to talk pricing and how to figure out pricing, I'm not an expert, but I can give you a little idea of how I come up with my pricing. A normal zipper pouch, especially if I'm using fusible fleece, I can make a zipper pouch in 15 minutes and that includes cutting out the fabric. But if I have to go through and quilt it, the time spent quilting this pouch versus one that I didn't have to quilt, I just adhered the fusible fleece. The difference is really large. I'm spending much more time on this and I'm going to be selling this at the same price as I did the one with the fusible fleece with no quilting. So I can make maybe three, possibly even four pouches in the time it took me just to make this one. Because you're not only quilting it, but I mark it because as it is, my quilting lines are never straight. I always call them organic because they're never perfect. Each of these little spaces in here, they're not all equal. And I think part of it also is the thread in it throws it off. But I can see that this one is smaller. At least it looks smaller than this one and stuff. So I'm taking the time to do that and to change my thread and to do all of those things and make sure I have the bobbin and all of that stuff. And that's a lot of extra time when it comes to the cost of making pouches and stuff. Now, if you're just making it for fun and you're doing it as a gift, it really doesn't matter. But if you're going to like a craft show and you want to bring 50 zipper pouches, and if you make them like this versus a simpler method, you're, you're going to take a lot more time making those 50 than if you just use like the fusible fleece or did simple quilting, which is why I switched to this. Now, even though the amount of stitches on here are the same, I mark these at the inch mark, stitch them one way, mark the inch mark on the other side, stitch them the other. So now this one I marked at the inch mark and then I stitched in between, but I only had to mark it once. So I was able to just quickly stitch through it compared to that one. But this one's really cute with the daisies and the blue background. I put a little yellow zipper on to highlight the yellow in there. And then my little tassels. I get questions on my tassels occasionally. I just pick them up on Amazon. I do not have a specific seller. I get the most tassels I can for the smallest price. And I also check the reviews to make sure that, you know, you want to double check on Amazon or anywhere you're buying things. Has the shop been selling for a while? Is there 50 reviews versus 8,000 reviews and what the star ratings are? Now, and I don't believe all of the ones that say, like, you know, they give a one star and they give a terrible review. And I don't believe all the five stars either. I kind of average them out and make an educated decision based on what I see. So these, I went ahead and boxed the bottoms a little bit for the corners, so these pouches will stand up. So again, a Notions one, you could put some English paper piecing, you can make little granny squares, your embroidery, cosmetics, markers and stuff like that can go in here. Again, I don't sew with very much tan or anything like that, so I was really happy to be able to put that zipper on there. And these have little hearts going around them. But all I think about when I see this, I'm going to pause for a second. And you guys think about what does that look like to you? It reminds me of the Viewmaster viewer things, those little round discs that you put in your Viewmaster master, and then you click it to see the picture. That was one of my favorite toys as a kid. I loved the Viewmaster. I used to collect all the different discs. My grandparents would buy me all kinds of things for it, and I loved just looking through it. But when I look at this, that's what I see because they have the little notches. It's a circular disc-like. I think it was what? pressed paper, cardboard, or something like that. I don't even think they were plastic back then. Not many things were all plastic back then. This was plastic, the device. But anyway, they have the little notches out of it, so when you go like this, the thing would grab it and spin it around. So that's what I see every time I see this fabric. 
So these are nice and soft. You can fold them up and put them inside another bag. These are a little bit firmer just because there's no bottom. And this, depending on the fabric that's on the inside, this white fabric is pretty good. But it does still scrunch up. It's just a little bit sturdier than this. Plus that one has more quilting. These, I kept them with just one inch apart so it's nice and soft and then adding that extra quilting down the center. So by adding those extra lines on here and having them about a half an inch apart, don't worry, I always clean off all of the fuzz before I ship them to you. They were all nice and clean, but then once I start sitting them down in my work area, because I have to get them all defuzzed for the photos, but adding those extra lines onto there makes it a little bit firmer, which is why I like to really quilt my tote bags a lot. So this is another knitting one. This one says cast on, right side skip, yarn over, bind over. And I put more of the fun yarn fabric on the inside. I thought if you're going to have a black pouch on the outside, it's fun to open it up and have a little bit of a pop of color in there. You can get rid of all the shadows. Oh, it's shadows everywhere. Again, I went ahead and did the boxed bottom. And I know lots and lots, but here's the last one. I have a few on here that are matched. So I have the flat version, and then this one has the little boxed bottoms. Different color zippers. I was trying to find zippers. I didn't have an exact, I had this green that matched you know, exact, but after that I didn't have another one. So I was trying to find this pink right here to pull this pink out, but I didn't. But this pink here works really well with it. And then just white on the inside. Again, this one will stand up nicely and you can put all kinds of fun things in it. So your scrappy word for today is zipper. Are you addicted to making zipper pouches like I am? When I see a fabric, I'm always like, oh, that would make a great zipper pouch. Oh, that would make a great tote bag. I, because of what I make, I can see that in my fabric. I find it's a lot easier to see it in the fabric than in the yarn, because many times I would purchase a yarn in the past, and I'd be like, okay, I love this yarn, I love the color, but I don't know what to make with it. So it sits on the shelf until it calls my name. Something will pop into my head or I'll see something online when I'm looking through Ravelry or something and I'll be like, oh, that yarn needs to be that. But when it comes to zipper pouches, I think any type of fabric that is fun makes a great zipper pouch. I mean, alien zipper pouches, I, if you like this type of thing. And I, I'm not like, oh, I love the aliens and the spaceships, but I love the aliens and the spaceships. I love the bright green to it. I love the novelty and the funness of it. And it's just a great little alien on there with their spaceships. The bright colored yarn, you know me, I love all the bright stuff. Many times you purchase flannel and you make your like jammy pants and lounge pants with the flannel, or maybe you'll turn it into a quilt. But the soft feel of it, because we know flannel has that fuzzy type feel to it, why not make a zipper pouch with it? Especially if you've already made the quilt or you've made the lounge pants and jammy bottoms and stuff like that. If you have some left over, go ahead and make a little matching zipper pouch. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will see you guys next week. Bye.